So I've had a few people ask me, hey, how come there's nothing happening on the Jeep? And it's because of other things going on. Can't tell yet, but what's been going on is that blue Ford crew cab F350 that I bought, that 90. Well, parts are super cheap, but anything that can be changed has definitely had parts swapped out and others gone in and what's left is a master, a booster and the entire front end is getting um, stripped down and rebuilt with new stub axles because it needs it all the Torringtons are gone and uh, new steering gear all the drag links and tie rods there's two boxes there because the front end and it matches the front end in my Jeep and the Jeep is using um, stock steering components so I've got a couple more pair of those laying about. Uh, other work going on though is the coolest part so um, as well not only have I been busy just rebuilding that blue truck to make it reliable but um, I've been drawing up with my students at school and well actually maybe they're just tagging along with you that's just great. We've got um, eight 3D printers that we're building using really nice components and a plasma cut steel frame. So here's the frame loaded in. Um, I don't know how many lines of G-code it is. It's a couple thousand actually. I was blown away. Maybe more. And um, um, 316's plate loaded in. And we're going to blow through this entire half sheet right away for um, nine frames, one spare, and for all the other subcomponents, the other half of that 316's plate sheet will soon have had the majority cut out of it. So I'm about ready to go hit uh, run. I haven't even used this thing for a long time, so I'll just power up the hypertherm right now. And um, um, the fellow that I bought my electronics package from pre-bundled into a nice NEMA box that's been humming up over here. He's just told me recently that I needn't worry about uh, radio interference, electromagnetic interference from cell phones. So for the first time in a long time, I'm going to uh, shoot a video of some of my plasma cutting. I've been plasma cutting constantly but um, a lot of it I just haven't haven't been documenting recently so I've just topped up the plasma table with water and baking soda and it's right up and uh, well let's just see what happens I am definitely gonna need a jacket on or my wife will kill me here so like uh, so many guys unprepared shooting a video, I guess I'm going to shake it around and make you guys wait a while. Make my kids wait a while. I think family watches these more than anybody. All right. So maybe that'll stop my sweater from getting completely splattered. What I've done is I've zeroed this machine tip off right on the absolute corner of the material. And... Um, I expect we're going to get a fair bit of splatter here when I hit run because it's all so close to the to the electronics in the machine. But in the back end of the table, I think I must have four or five layers of steel from quarter inch, three sixteenths, one eighth, and I think another partly cut three sixteenths back there. So it's just it's just going to have to be cut on my side of the table rather than the back side where I prefer it. So what's going on inside of this cut file is there's a square outer frame, there's two triangular um, reinforcers that sit on back to stabilize the vertical, there's a little Y motor uh, mounting bracket rather than 3D printing it, and the first two rear or front corners, depending on how we just finish engineering this thing off to hold the y-axis. Um, I wanted to get more into it, but this original part of the original frame I just grabbed off of the internet as a 
as what was it a DXF and I loaded it into Creo and uh, the relationships have become dimensionally unstable so I just can't edit it any further and as a matter of fact some of the points might have shifted in it I'm gonna wind up redrawing it here and that's a drag but uh, hopefully everything exists and is correct right now and uh, this is just our our prototype so let's go click run well, air air is a little low. Let's crank the air up a little bit here. These little green dots there, I should have it in the middle. There we go. Now we're in the middle range for our air right here. As soon as we crank it up though, it'll probably be too high for air pressure. But a little bit too high, it'll change the bevel a little bit, but we should be fine. So we're all zeroed off. Let's run it. Right here, run. Thank <laughs> you. 
for it here to finish. All right, check those out. I overdimensioned our little machine screw diameters by just a few thou. This is um, a European, uh, I think I got it from Europe where this DXF originated from. And you can see it's not the same as anything out there anymore, but everything's just over dimensioned a little bit because they've all been drawn up for laser, and my curve widths are are not so easily controllable. So I've just opened everything up a little bit. Um, the eight mil shaft stock that the Y axis glides on um, is a little over. Well, everything's a little over, but it looks really sweet and crisp. So, how's that for zero waste though? Close enough to the edge, waste not, want not. The acrylic framed ones on internet, they're really, really nice looking, but when you read about them, there's very, very few people who are happy with them after using them just a few times, and then they're out about 400 bucks American by the time you get them up here, plus a fair bit of waste, and then there's no component on it that you can practically move over once you, you've had the thing melt on you or warp so bad that it shakes apart and damages some of the other components that you could reuse. Um, and I don't know about the shafts that they're using for 
length, if you could either, even grab them and uh, install them into another frame, some of these um, Chinese knockoffs. But that's uh, a really nice frame because for us, our usable Z is going to be, well, I'm just trying to hold it here, it's huge. Our usable Z is, is huge. I stretched it um, about an inch and a half, about four, four centimeters plus a little bit more. And, um, well, I'll pop some photos in with this uh, if I ever do post it. And we'll see how it assembles, how all that indexing works out. Thanks for watching, everybody.